Namaskar, I am Dr. Nitik, a certified clinician in diabetes management and a junior resident at AIMS Kohati. Welcome back to the channel. In today's video, I am going to talk about first line antihypertensive drugs, especially between S inhibitors and ARBS. <clears throat> I have seen many of the junior doctors and the students still studying MBBS. They are confused between uh, S inhibitors and ARBS. <clears throat> but there is a concept, if you know this concept, uh, nothing much to think you will know which one is better and why it is better and from this concept there may be some questions coming into your competitive exams like NEET PG, INI okay so watch the video till the end uh, let us begin uh, I would like to begin with a question I have already written it down a question goes like this a 50 year old lady presented to your clinic with cough Due to first line monotherapy antihypertensive drug, where does the drug act? Option A S, option B AT1 receptor, option G AT4 receptor, option D mass receptor. Okay. So I have intentionally framed this question as a controversial question because it can be anything. Cough is a rare side effect of ARBS and S inhibitors okay and I have said it's a monotherapy why I have given monotherapy usually we start uh, antihypertensive drugs as monotherapy maybe it is ARBS maybe it is calcium channel blocker maybe it is a S inhibitors uh, usually we start single single therapy we call monotherapy okay so which of the following is the correct answer after completion of this uh, discussion, we'll come back to this question again. But let me tell you, I'm staying beside National Highway 31. So there is a lot of noise in the background. Sorry for that. Let us begin. So today's discussion is uh, between S inhibitors versus ARBS. But before we go into the drug, we have to know a little bit of physiology, okay? So as you know, there is something called RAS, okay? RAS system, RAS system. What happens in RAS system? Angiotensinogen is converted to angiotensin 1 is converted to angiotensin 2. Okay. After this, There are various receptors like AT1, AT2, AT4, MAS. Angiotensin nozen to angiotensin 2, this conversion is brought by renin. Okay? And angiotensin 1 to angiotensin 2 is done by S. We call it name itself is angiotensin converting enzyme. You already know it. I'm revising it for you. This angiotensin 2, when it works at AT1, this produces effects. Okay, those effects are uh, vasoconstriction, vasoconstriction pro-inflammatory inflammatory uh, aldosterone secretion aldosterone secretion and it also increases insulin resistance Okay, 
however this this receptors when it angiotensin 2 works at 82 and mass 84 they have similar effects they have vasodilation they have the vasodilation anti-inflammatory anti-inflammatory anti-growth this these receptors they produce effects opposite to 81 okay so now the question is from where renin is released you already know it is released from kidney right and from where this s is released it is from lung okay that from endothelium endothelium now the question is why does kidney release renin before that i would like to tell you this s is not only released from the lung it is also released from the kidney in human body inadequate amount studies have sounded but it's okay uh, let it be coming back to the topic the question was why kidney releases renin okay train is coming there may be three conditions I mean there are three conditions when kidney release renin I know you have you know it but let me revise it for you first condition is when decreased sodium is detected by macula densa macula densa is part of jga okay you know it i know but juxta glomerular apparatus these are modified cells columnar cells in the uh, distal convoluted tubule okay there is uh, something like this this is your dct dct and from here your arterial okay this is your efferent arterial here they have modified cells in the arterial they have modified cells what do we call these cells we call these cells polkisen cell and these polkisen cells they release renin I have to rough every now and then because I have a very small board okay so whenever uh, macula denser detects decreased sodium in the filtrate it stimulates polkisen cells to release renin and this renin will convert angiotensin on the, all these effects okay another condition is when your blood volume decreases this is your carotid sinus here your carotid bodies will be there carotid bodies when your blood volume decreases this carotid uh, sinuses carotid bodies they detect that blood volume is decreased then it will send information to NPS in medulla nucleus tectus solitarius okay nucleus tractus solitarius through which nerve ninth nerve that is glossopharyngeal nerve okay and from here it will release systemic sympathetic 
outflow and you know sympathetic outflow is to thoracolumbar that is T1 to L2 sometime L3 also okay so this this will work at JGA this will work at JGA you innervate JGA at where at Paul Kissen cell again Paul Kissen cell has beta 1 receptors and it is and this sympathetic outflow will stimulate uh, Paul Kissen cell and this Polkisen cell will release renin. That is second condition. Third condition is third condition is Polkisen cell itself measure blood volume. It's uh, like a barometer. Okay, so when it detects that the blood volume has decreased, Polkisen cell will automatically release renin. Okay, those were a little bit of physiology. Now coming back to the drugs, S inhibitors, well before I go there, let me tell you the effect of these things. When vasoconstriction happens, what, what, do, what happens to your blood pressure? BP is equal to cardiac output into total peripheral resistance, right? When you when your vessel constrict, you'll increase total peripheral resistance. But this TPR is directly proportional to BP, so BP will also increase. Okay. When this aldosterone is secreted, it uh, it causes expression of sodium potassium pump. Okay, sodium potassium pump in your uh, duct uh, to be precise, terminal part of DCT and uh, initial part of collecting duct. Okay, so what it will do is it will reabsorb sodium. There are a lot of things that are it, it causes sodium channel also. Okay, this is your lumen of, this is your lumen, this is your lumen, and this is your basolateral membrane, basolateral membrane, this is your apical membrane, okay. So, this is the effect of uh, allosterone. Always remember, water goes along with uh, salt. Because when you eat a lot of salty items, you feel thirsty, okay. So always think that uh, water goes with salt. So with this, water has to go. When, you, when water is going back into your system, your blood volume will, volume will increase. When your blood volume is increased, your preload, Preload will increase. When your preload increase, your cardiac output will increase. Because cardiac output is directly proportional to BP, your BP will also increase. Okay, there is the effect of aldosterone. I'm I'm telling you briefly. Okay, I'm not going deep because uh, that's a different system, different mechanism. And what about this? pro-inflammatory. See, pro-inflammatory meaning this is your artery. It's composed of smooth muscles. What are these receptors? What are the receptors present in smooth muscle? Maybe it's alpha 1. Sometimes it's beta 2. Okay. Depending on action. So, what this uh, pro-inflammatory cytokines they do is they cause inflammation when uh, inflammation occurs obviously it heals by fibrosis when it heals by fibrosis there will be hardening of your vessel hardening of 
your vessel. Now, that what we call sclerosis, no? Sclerosis, harden. Your vessels is sclerosis. When your vessels is hard, harden, its elasticity, I mean, compliance is gone. It cannot uh, be stretched easily. That's when your resistance increase. That increases TPR, total peripheral resistance. And it increases your blood pressure, okay? Now, to avoid this effect in the hypertensive patient, we give drugs. One is S inhibitors. S inhibitors, what it does, will inhibit S, okay? When S is inhibited, this, this angiotensin 2 won't be formed. When this angiotensin won't be formed, this effect will be gone. This bad effect will be gone. And this good effect, because these are causing vasodilation, anti-inflammatory, it's opposite of this, good effect will also be gone, okay? However, when you give ARBS, it will only inhibit the bad guy, AT1. When it inhibits AT1, this bad guy will be dead, but this good guy will remain alive, right? So which one is the better one? Whether it is ARBS or S inhibitors. As you can see, ARBS is better than S inhibitors when you use when you use as monotherapy, okay? Because ARBS is killing the uh, bad guy, but not the good guy. I hope you understood what I am trying to tell you. An example of these drugs are like Sartan, Sartan, no? This tell me Sartan, Bal Sartan, this Sartan. And these are like Pril drugs, Inala Pril, Captopril, this the Pril, Pril drugs. These are S inhibitors. Now, I would like to ask you one question. Do we use ARBS? I mean, do we prefer ARBS over S inhibitors every time? The answer is no. Sometimes S inhibitors better than AR. BS. Which are the conditions and why we do? Why we do prefer S inhibitors? Condition I'll let, I'll tell you. CHF, congestive heart failure, or something related to your heart. Okay, if your heart is already not working properly, then we prefer S inhibitors. But the question is why? If you read of your RAS system and if your cardiovascular system thoroughly, you will understand why we prefer S inhibitors. I will ask you to read your RAS system and your cardiovascular system so that you answer me this question. If you already know, let me know in the comment section if you have watched this far, okay? So, coming back to the question we had, option A, it was S inhibitor, oh, sorry, S enzyme, B, AT1, C, AT4, D, M, A, S. I guess I am right with the options. But the 